Hey everybody, welcome to Damn Good Barbecue. Right now we're going to take a look at this 1,000 gallon pit and we're going to go ahead and get them all seasoned up and cleaned. So our first step right now to go ahead and get in this um, new pit, we've got 2,000 gallon pits on this, on this trailer. Um, and the other side we've been cooking on for about a month or so now. And so before we get to cooking, we have to go ahead and power wash this thing out. Still has some debris left in there from when it was manufactured. Um, and we need to get it washed out, get it seasoned. We're just going to spray it down some oil. And then we're going to run a fire in there for about five or six hours. Um, just to make sure that we start getting it seasoned. Um, pit's going to cook a lot better. Um, and to really just make everything just run a lot more smooth. Um, so we're going to take you guys along for that process right now. And show you how we do it. Um, we're going to do a little time lapse here as we're getting everything power washed um, and we'll talk through some more stuff as we get through the uh, cleaning process. But thanks guys, we're happy to have you. <laughs> So, so far we have uh, power washed the entire inside of the smoker. Um, we're really just looking to make sure there's no more metal shavings that are lingering um, up on the roof. Um, and then just make sure we got all the debris out. Um, so what we are going to do right now is you saw us taking out the grates. Um, so I took out all the grates in here, put them over on my driveway. Um, so I'm going to take you guys over on the driveway right now and show you how I go about power washing those. It's super simple, um, pretty self-explanatory. But I'll bring you guys over there, show you that. And then we are going to put everything back in, spray it down with some cooking oil, and I'll show you what, what oil I'm using. Um, it's just a basic canola oil that I bought from Costco. Um, and then I'll show you how I build a fire um, and get that rolling um, so we can go ahead and make sure that the smoker gets seasoned. <laughs> All right, guys, so we got these all power washed. Um, we're going to go ahead and throw these back on the pit um, and get them all sprayed down and get a fire going. Uh, we'll take you along for that one as well. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. Um, please excuse the uh, little bit of a mess here. But So we've got two different pits from Primitive. Um, so stay tuned to the channel. We're going to be doing a lot more cooking type videos, reviews, um, and just showing you guys some comparisons. Um, so here, this is our 500 gallon that we got earlier this year um, from Primitive as well. And then the one that you guys have been seeing all over Instagram and that you're probably excited about taking a look at now is the double, double thousand gallon pit, which is right there. So we're gonna be doing some pretty cool videos coming up and we're really excited to kind of show you the comparison between the 500 and the 1,000. Um, we've been getting a lot of questions regarding the differences between the 1,000 gallon and the 500 gallon. So this is a big reason why we're starting this channel and the big reason on what we're going to be bringing and a lot of the content is aimed at you guys and helping you make the best decision you can. Um, whether it's for backyard pits or um, you're looking at doing some commercial stuff like we are. Um, hopefully we'll be able to answer some of those, those burning questions that you have um, on if you should buy, buy a 500 or if you should buy a 1,000. Um, how to, what's the difference between running a 500 versus a 1,000? How to manage all that meat um, and how to do pop-ups. All that, all that type of stuff is what we're going to be focusing on. Um, we'll take you guys on the journey as we get ready to open our restaurant next year um, and all that kind of stuff too. Um, but yeah, let's hop on over to the pit and put all these grates back in. We'll see you there. Alright, so we have all the grates back in the smoker. Um, so what we're going to do right now is I'm just using a real simple 
canola oil that I bought from Costco. Um, we, I mean, if I had some tallow on hand or some linseed oil or something, I think those would be better options, but coconut oil is perfectly fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spray down the top and bottom grates, and then we're going to spray down doors, um, and then we're going to try to get as much of the inside of the smoker as possible. Um, don't worry if you can't, if there's some parts you can't reach, I wouldn't worry about it. I would just focus mainly on the cooking, cooking surfaces and the doors and the, the areas you can reach, um, and you're good to go. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you time lapse one more time. I promise hopefully that'll be the last one. Um, and then we'll get on over and I'll show you how we build a fire um, and kind of give you some tips on just how we go about getting some fire started. All right, man, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Everything's sprayed down, all the wheels on the smoker. Um, so let's take over here and uh, take a look at how we go ahead about getting some fire started. Um, and we'll show you the rest of this uh, seasoning process. So, we got the doors closed down. This one, so this is one my own recommendation. If you guys do get a primitive pit, um, these things are heavy duty um and our 500 over there does not have any counterweights um it's not a difference it's, it's not too big of a problem for me but like i've got my dad that helps and then i've got some other folks that help um when we do pop-ups and those doors are heavy like they, they were probably weigh 75 pounds um and these ones are even heavier um so without the <laughs> without these counterweights it would be it would be difficult over the course of the entire day to be uh, to be running the smoker, um, but anyways, let's get over here. So we actually age a lot of our own wood. Um, so this is mainly a cost thing. Um, wood around North Carolina is pretty expensive um, to get about a cord. Um, it's about four hundred fifty dollars at most places. Um, we've got some decent local providers that were able to get some wood, um, but a lot of the stuff has just been chopped down. Like this tree, right, this is all from one tree, all this stuff, that stuff, and then all this stuff here in this um, barrel um, was all chopped down. The white oak tree, um, we went and picked it up, and we just got it sitting on these, these wood racks here. Um, so for the wood racks, we actually make these ourselves. You can get these little brackets um, on Amazon for like... $35 for a pair um, and you can build a wood rack and so what's nice about it is you can build a wood rack exactly to the specifications that you need so we we use a lot of wood so we've got um, one two three four five and we've got another one um, back there but it would be super expensive to buy um, fabricated wood racks so this is a super cost-effective way for us to do it um, and what we've been, what we've done is we actually got 12 foot two by fours that connect the bottoms, and then these posts on the sides are five feet tall. Um, so we can fit close to. I'm not super familiar with the cord measurement just yet, still trying to get my bearings on that, but it's pretty close to a full cord um, that we're able to fit on a, on a 12 by five rack, um, and that would last us for for a little while. Um, and then we've got this little yard max wood splitter that we use. Um, we'll do a review on that and talk about that in a future video. Um, but this is what we're working on right now. So we're actually in the middle of a cook that we're doing. Um, so you can see the fire going in there. But <clears throat> this is what we're working on today. So I'm going to bring you guys down a little bit and show you kind of what we're working with. So this is a completely unused firebox. Um, we've never we've never cooked in this smoker before, as I was saying, um, seasoned it up for the first time just now. But what we would do when we build a fire is we typically put two support logs here at the bottom. And what's nice about these thousand gallons and the five hundred gallon is these pits are so big. This split's not huge, 
but you can put full size splits um, in these smokers, which is super nice. It's a burn for a long time, um, super easy to split down. Um, you don't need to split it a whole ton of times to get it to work like you would in a, in a backyard offset. Um, so that's one of my favorite things about. Sorry about that. I had a little technical difficulty. The camera fell over, um, but we're back. Um, so what I was saying is one of my favorite things about these 1,000-gallon, 500-gallon pits is how big of logs you can put in there. Um, so there's times where if I build this fire up appropriately and stack it right, um, I can go inside and hang out with the family for 45 minutes before I need to come back down and, and really check on it again. Um, so that's what we do. So holders will stack two um, long ways, um, and then we'll grab a couple more pieces and a lot of this stuff we've been aging for about 13 months or so 12 months um, so it's all pretty dry so what we'll do is you just kind of crisscross stack the lattice um, here and we'll, we'll usually just start with four pieces get some uh, tinder some paper some um, cardboard here right here in the middle um, it's really nice we have a torch um, we have what I need to get the, the tank filled so we, we're not going to use that today so I'll show you the more accessible way um, <laughs> that we go about starting the fires um, so let me go get some of that stuff and I'll be right back alright guys I'm back so what I, did, I just grabbed some butcher paper if you have butcher paper it's a really um, great way to get a fire started um, for some reason this stuff's so thick it just burns for a little while and what I've done is I just sprayed a little bit of canola oil in there um, Whatever kind of oil you have on hand would work. Um, just helps it burn for a little bit longer. and really helps you get that fire started. Um, something else that I did, um, I don't know if you can see it in there, but I've got some uh, strips of uh, beef fat that we trimmed off the briskets that I put in there as well. Um, it's really good, lights up real fast, um, and it burns for a long time. So if you have any trouble getting your fire started or you just want to get a fire started real quick, um, these two methods um, will get your fire going like that. Um, I was actually having trouble with our fire earlier because um, it rained a couple days ago and we've got the wood got a little wet um, and I threw some beef, um, strips of beef fat in there and it the fire got going real quick. Um, so we'll go ahead and put this in there. We'll go ahead and light it with, with a lighter and, and get the fire going. If you have any charcoal as well, um, I didn't feel like waiting around for charcoal to light, but a bed of charcoal is a real good way to get the fire started as well. Um, try to stick to lump charcoal. Um, we've got some charcoal um, that we're actually going to be doing a review on um, on our Instagram here pretty soon. Um, have that posted here in the next couple days. Um, by the time you're watching this video, it probably is already out. But it's it's really good, high quality stuff, um, and we're excited to try it out. So we'll let you know what our thoughts are. All right, we'll go ahead and let this get going. And um, thanks again, guys. We really appreciate you hopping in today. Um, we just got done showing you how we got the fire started. Um, and we're just gonna let this fire run for the next five or six hours. Um, but today's not really a video about how to manage your fire and how to run a fire. We'll, we'll do something like that in the future um, if you all are interested in something like that. Um, today was really just to show how we go about that cleaning process. Um, we'll just give you a quick recap real quick before we, we sign off for the video today. Um, as I said before, this video was really just to show you guys how we go about seasoning a new smoker. Um, I know it can be a little daunting depending on your experience level and if you've done it before, if you haven't done it before, a lot of people, that scares them away from getting an offset smoker. Super simple, easy process, and really something you should do on every type of grill or cooking surface that you use. Um, is to season it regularly take care of it. We'll show you how we take care and, and clean um, Every couple months and stuff like that as well, but real quick recap So what we did is we went through here We power washed the inside of the chamber. We took out all these grates and We took them over there and we power washed them on the driveway just to make sure that we got all of those extra Material that was lingering from when it was when it was made and built um, You don't want any of that stuff getting on your food and then we slap it all back in the smoker Sprayed it down with some oil, which you can still see on here. Um, 
started a fire. Now we're just going to run this bad boy um, probably around 300 or so on these bottom grates. And then these top ones will probably be about 325, 350. And we'll just keep that going for about five or six hours. Um, and we might put one more coat of oil down on the smoker, on the, on the doors and on the grates. Um, just to make sure that we get a good, nice coating of oil. Um, what happens is it creates a polymer on the on the surface, and just keeps it from rusting, makes the smoker um, look a lot better, um, and just keeps it maintained for the long term. But but yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, again, we really appreciate you hopping on and joining us and joining us in today's video. Um, and keep a lookout. We're going to be posting more content, doing some more stuff, um, and we're excited to share everything with you. Um, but again, this is Nick Damp with Damp Good Barbecue. Um, you guys have a great day, and keep on smoking. We'll see you soon. Bye.